Look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. We offer this Mass for Sarita Vaz Sophie's intention. In the silence of our heart, let us acknowledge our sins and ask God for pardon, forgiveness, and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, This very day I will begin to make you a great man in the eyes of all Israel, to let them be sure that I am going to be with you even as I was with Moses. As for you, give the order to the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant. When you have reached the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you are to stand still in the Jordan itself. Then Joshua said to the Israelites, Come closer and hear the words of the Lord our God. Joshua said, By this you shall know that a living God is with you and without a doubt with expel the Canaanite. Look, the ark of the Lord, the Lord of the whole earth, is about to cross the Jordan at your head. As soon as the priests with the ark of the Lord the Lord of the whole earth have set their feet in the waters of the Jordan. The upper waters of the Jordan flowing down will be stopped in their course and still in on one mass. Accordingly, when the people struck camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carried the Ark of the Covenant in front of the people. As soon as the bearers of the Ark reached the Jordan and the feet of the priests who carried it touched the waters, the upper waters stood still and made one heap of a wide space, from Adam to the fortress of Zarath, while those flowing down to the Sea of the Araba, that is the Salt Sea, stopped running altogether. The people crossed opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood still on dry ground in mid Jordan, and all Israel continued to cross dry short till the whole nation had finished its crossing of the river. This is the word of the Lord. Responsible Sam. Alleluia. When Israel came forth from Egypt, Jacob's sons from an alien people, Judah became the Lord's temple, Israel became his kingdom. Alleluia. The sea flooded the site. The Jordan turned back on its course. The mountains leaped like rams, and the hills like yearling sheep. Hallelujah. Why, why was it? See that you fled, that you turned back, Jordan, on your course. Mountains that you leaped like rams, hills like yearling sheep. Hallelujah. It stands for the ghost proclamation. 
Let your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me? As often as seven times? Jesus answered, Not seven, I tell you, but seventy-seven times. And so the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who decided to settle his account with his servant. When the reckoning began, they brought him a man who owed 10,000 talents, but he had no means of paying, so his master gave orders that he should be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, to meet the debt. At this, the servant threw himself down at his master's feet. Give me time. He said, and I will pay the whole sum. And the servant must have felt so sorry for him that he let him go and canceled the debt. Now, as the servant went out, he happened to meet a fellow servant who owed him 100 denarii. And he seized him by the throat and began to throttle him. Pay what you owe me, he said. His fellow servant fell at his feet and implored him, saying, Give me time, and I will pay you. But the other would not agree. On the contrary, he had him thrown into prison till he should pay the debt. His fellow servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair to him. Then the master sent for him. You wicked servant! He said, I canceled all that debt of yours when you appealed to me. Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And in his anger, the master handed him over to the torturers till he should pay all his debt. And that is how my heavenly father would deal with you unless you each forgive your brother from your heart. Jesus had now finished what he wanted to say, and he left Galilee and came into the part of the Judea, which is on the far side of the Jordan. Beloved in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Sometimes when the question of why God allows suffering and difficulties in life, you know, comes forward. It's sometimes difficult to answer. But we have a lot of answers in the scriptures and a lot of answers have been given. In, in, in my reflection on the, on the readings of today as I read, I, I, I asked this question. Why do difficulties come? Why do hurdles come on our way? And I was just trying to see what God could reveal to me. And I just thought that I think some of the difficulties come so that we will not take God for granted. Difficulties also come so that the wisdom and the reason God has given us could be used. If everything went smooth, if everything went the way you, 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 you wanted, if everything went as, as smooth as possible, probably you forget about God and you think that you are in control. You do everything. And if everything worked perfectly without problems to solve, you will not use your brain, your mind. 
And that is what I discern from the first reading of today. But you know what? The Israelites were freed from Egypt. And the first difficult problem Hedo they encountered was how they were going to cross the Red Sea. But God made it possible. With their effort and their will and their strength, that wouldn't have been possible. But God made it so because God was involved. These Israelites went into the desert and they were hungry. They were thirsty, difficulties, hurdles. They cried. God made it possible for them to find food and drink and, and water to drink. Many things happened in the desert, but now they are close to entering the promised land. And there is another river to cross, another hurdle to see and enter into the promised land. And that hurdle, that river was Jordan. And, and the reading tells us that at this point, it had even risen mightier than before. So they, had, they were like facing death. But when they cross this water, there's life. A land flowing with milk and honey. A land of success, a land of peace, a land of quietness. So what did they do? In their own power, in their own strength, oh, they, they couldn't have crossed this. And there was no other way. They had to face the difficulty. They had to face the hurdle and go through. But they did that because they listened to God because God was involved we told that it said God told the priests who were carrying the ark of the covenant that when they step into the water the water will be divided and they will stand on dry ground and that is what happened for them to go through my dear brothers and sisters in life you face hurdles in life you face difficulties. But some difficulties are unescapable, are unavoidable. We need to face them in order to enter into the stage of success. If you're a student and you want to pass your exams, you want to become great in the future, you have to face that hurdle of examination, that hurdle of reading. Because if you don't read, if you don't have the exams and do better, you're not going to go ahead in life it's one of the hurdles that you have to meet you may have to cry go through pains but you have to pass it in order to go so does it happen in married life in our various lives know that they will be there face them squarely with the grace of god and you overcome them and it will be successful for you in the gospel of today Jesus calls us to do something. We have always heard that do unto others what you wish others to do to you, isn't it? And today I want you to put it this way. Do unto others what God has done for you. Do unto others what God has done for you. Just think about it, just reflect on it and act on it. Look at what the two servants in the gospel did. The master, in a way, represents God. This first servant owed him a lot. And it merited that his whole family and his possessions be confiscated and put into prison. But what did he do? He begged. He asked for mercy. He asked for God's patience. And what did the master do? He said he forgave him. He was patient with him. He pardoned him and gave him all that he asked for. But this very servant couldn't be patient, couldn't be forgiven, couldn't be generous to his fellow human being. And what was, what was the consequence? Because of his wickedness, he had to suffer for that. Friends, if we live in wickedness, we will suffer for that. Unless we change, unless we repent, we will suffer for the wickedness and the things we cause to 
to other people, or we, call, or we bring unto other people. Let us be mindful of what we do, what we say, what we experience in life, and always have in mind that I will treat the other person, not because of the way he has treated me, but because of how God has treated me. And if you view it this way, we can all be generous, we can all be patient, and we can all be forgiven. May the Lord grant us the strength and the grace to do this always in our daily lives. Amen. Let us now stand and pray that God may grant us the grace to do what he has done for us. In thanksgiving to God for the gift of our lives, for the gift of this day, and for his manifold blessings, we say, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the hierarchy of the church. We pray for Pope Francis, the College of Cardinals, bishops, priests, the religious, that God will continually strengthen us to do his will. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all Christians and all people who believe in God, that they may always realize in their life that without God, all is impossible. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are sick and who need God's intervention at this life. We pray especially for Ben and the Philippines, that the healing of God will be upon him. We pray for Cecil, that God will touch him and restore him to strength. And for all who are sick, that God will come to their aid. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Sarita Vaz, for whom we offer this mass, that every intention that she prays for may be granted. And for those who have asked for our prayers, that God will visit them with their needs. Lord, in your mercy. And now in the silence of our heart, let us pray for ourselves and pray for the young ones who await their results. And even for those who write exams, the success will be theirs. May Mary, our mother, join us in prayer as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are there amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Merciful, generous, and forgiving God, we thank you for the gift of this day and for the gift of our lives. Look with pity upon us and grant us the grace to face every hurdle in life knowing that with you on our side, we shall overcome them. And grant us the grace to do unto others what you have done for us. We ask all of these through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God the Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church. For in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Trusting in the providence and the forgiveness of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sons, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The bread that I will give, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thank you for your participation and have a blessed day.